Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Ollum. Welcome, Inside Hilltopper Athletics Basketball Edition and maybe one of the more fun shows that we're going to do all season because of the importance of why we're here. Dawn, this is what we play for. How excited are you? Oh my goodness! Uh, on a scale of one to ten, probably a fifteen. <laughs> I mean, this 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 is this is why we do what we do. I mean, it's a regional championship. You win this game, you go to Evansville, Indiana. You play in the Elite Eight, the national spotlight. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. And you couldn't ask for a better dance partner. Yeah, absolutely. And before we, I'll get right back to that. But just uh, to build upon what you said. I get so nervous. If I'm doing TV, I'm not nervous at all. My mind is focused. I'm watching the game. When I have to watch our teams play, the West Liberty teams, in any sport, if I don't have a duty, if I'm just watching the game, I can barely control myself. I get so nervous. So let's get back. IUP, uh, a team that we talk about a lot, we know exist in our very small basketball world, but maybe not quite as familiar as people would think. No, you're, you're right. And, it, and if it feels like deja vu all over again here with IUP and West Liberty and Atlantic Region Finals, well, it probably should. You know, this is the sixth time that we've met in the Atlantic Regional, and it's the fifth time we've played in a Sweet 16 game. But, and this was hard for me to believe when I looked it up, it's been eight years since we played IUP in the Atlantic Regional, and it seemed like we look at them every year. Yeah, and that when you told me that, it kind of stunned me as well, because we are always thinking IUP Regional Championship game winner goes the Elite Eight, and and I wouldn't have guessed it was eight years. Now the COVID thing threw that off a little bit as well, where the majority of the PSAC elected to set that year out. So we didn't have an opportunity to play them in that year. But but the Atlantic region has been weird about the teams that come out of here. Yes, that, 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 that is true. But one constant, or actually two constants, have been West Liberty and, and IUP. I mean, uh, they, re, they rearranged the regions, uh, reconstituted them. The NCAA switched this out of the East region, created the Atlantic region in uh, 2009. This is the 14th. Uh, Atlantic region tournament since the regions were changed and this is the tenth time West Liberty's made it to the championship game and it's the sixth time IUP's been in the championship game. Right and that that just speaks to the dominance of these programs. They have kind of been the face pretty much of the PSAC. West Liberty's been the face of what was then the WVIC, now the Mountain East Conference, and what are we up to, 12 regular season titles in 13 years? I believe so. So it just shows that it's great basketball in this region. It's a talent-laden region with other high-profile teams. It just seems like it's been the West Liberties and the IUPs of the world that uh, that come out of here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Offense versus defense. Okay. And that's that's a good point to b bring up, with, especially with these two teams, because you look at West Liberty, you know, and everybody knows about the scoring, you know, over 100 points a game. And IUP, we just got done playing Mercyhurst with a defensive reputation, and I've got some numbers for both of those things. And also, again, as we've said, West Liberty leads the nation, three-point field goals per game, assists, assists turnover ratio. They're number, you know, we're number two in scoring, scoring margin, steals, turnovers forced. Here comes IUP. They lead the nation in field goal percentage defense. They're eighth in three-point field goal percentage defense. So they're top ten in both of those super important categories. Not surprisingly, that means they're fourth in scoring defense, sixth in scoring margin. It, it's going to be deja vu all over again for you know whoever controls this tempo. Yeah, and controlling the tempo is always going to be key when you're talking West Liberty about it versus anyone because it's no secret our goal was to score 100 points in a game. We know good things happen if we get to 100. It's definitely going to happen. IUP is looking at it from a different stance. 
great things probably happen for them when they hold teams under 70 or 75 points, whatever it may be. So it is very similar to what we were talking about as we did this podcast before the Mercyhurst game. Which team can control the narrative enough that the court tilts in their favor? I agree. And for both teams, I mean, not just for West Liberty, but for IUP as well, tonight's game is going to be a real contrast in opponents to what we faced the last couple nights. IUP comes in here, they, they won a one-possession game against the CIAA team in round one. They came back the following night and had another really tough CIAA team. They struggled in the first half, and then all of a sudden they caught fire. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Ended up pulling away, but those were two extremely physical, strong, tall, big CIAA teams, slow tempo, IUPs, defense, wore them down, and all. West Liberty, on the other hand, we played Pitt Johnstown the first game. We were through 112 on the board. Uh, last night, we played a Mercyhurst team. It's a defensive-oriented team. Figured them out, and we scored 49 points in the second half. Ended up with a double-figure win. Whoever controls the tempo tonight is, is going to have the big advantage. Correct. And from a coaching standpoint, I think one of the things that may be the determining factor for one of these two teams is who can have a bigger differential in some of the other stats that we don't talk about a bunch. Offensive rebounding, mm. defensive rebounding, live ball turnovers. And, and there's probably four, five, six of those areas that we could talk about that you don't see in print all the time, but it's amazing how sometimes those are the statistics that dominate a game. Well, absolutely, and especially if you get into a game like this. Now, you're talking, um, you know, of course, there are coaches' polls, so they're just people's opinions, but you have uh, IUP comes in here, they're number three in the nation, we're number five in the nation. You would expect when two teams like that get together that, logic would seem to indicate you might have a one or two possession game coming down the stretch and those one or two possession games, the odd turnover, the bad pass, the bad bounce can have an even more of an impact than it would normally. Yes, so we'll keep an eye on that. Let's quickly uh, get into IUP a little bit. The people that are watching the podcast, we know what West Liberty is going to bring to the table. All five starters average over 11 points a game. We score over 100 points a game, and, and we try to stay away from because we're a team. We always talk. Right. We do things as a team. Let's talk about IUP a little bit. Okay, well, IUP, obviously, they're 32-1. and one. They've got some talented personnel. Um, go down the list. Now, Shondale Jones, first team all region selection. He was the leading scorer in the PSAC. PSAC West Player of the Year, he, he, he's their go-to guy, but they have a bunch of other weapons. The guy that I think gets overlooked in their lineup, redshirt sophomore named Dave Morris, 1,000-point scorer, repeat first-team all PSAC selection, averaged better than 15 points a game, led the PSAC in, in three-point field goal percentage, hit some big threes the other night to really help him stretch things out against Virginia Union. Also, the guy that really might be the toughest matchup for the Hilltoppers inside, Sophomore post, and I may, I, I'm afraid I might butcher this name, Tamiwa Suleiman. He's from London, England, first team all PSAC West, five time PSAC Defensive Player of the Week, 14 double doubles, fourth in the nation in total rebounds, sixth in offensive rebounds. What are your key stats? Yeah, and from a West Liberty standpoint, we know we're going to be undersized. We knew that coming into the season. I think it showed at times earlier in the season. I think West Liberty has grown up. They figured up, figured out what they got to do to neutralize size. And getting back into the size differential and the two or three guys that you just talked about, I think maybe the biggest key in this game is to getting all five guys on the court to rebound. Rebounding is not just a post player's responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I always use the term that with my teams, you rebound from the top down. Yes. Your guards have to rebound from the top down. You can't stand and watch plays. And that's how you neutralize size. Um, here's one stat that you have, so I'm going to steal your thunder and not let you read this. 
Since the end of the 2011 season, the Hilltoppers are 114 and three when holding their opponents under 80 points. 214 and three. Oh, did I screw that up? No. This is two two fourteen and three when holding their opponent under eighty points. And IUP and and don't mistake you know, when we say that IUP is a defensive oriented team, they are a defensive oriented team, but they are a defensive oriented team that creates offense out of its defense, also has talented players who can score on their own, create their own shot. They're no strangers to putting up big numbers. And the one other stat, and I can't remember if we discussed this on the last podcast or not, but after the, the win against Mercyhurst, the Hilltoppers are now 209-6, and six, which is a percentage of 972, including 18-0 and 0 this season when shooting 50% or better. That number is just astounding. Yes, and significantly, um, West Liberty has shot 50% or better in every postseason game this year, starting with the MEC quarterfinals. And that's, uh, but, and here is my one little prediction. I don't think we have to shoot 50% to win this game. I don't know if we can shoot 40% and win the game. But West Liberty has been extremely locked in. And that's how I want to finish this podcast. We talk so much about scoring, 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 and West Liberty and 100 points and all these things that we can break out. West Liberty is really, really good on the defensive end. Yes, that's one, one of the biggest improvements, I think, in this year's team, especially in what they do in the half-court defense. They, they are difficult to break down. Right, and due to the nature of their style, which is high risk, high reward, when you're trapping 94 foot, as good as West Liberty is on defense, it's not going to show in a lot of stats because you are getting a lot of numbered breaks against you that talented teams finish at a higher rate. But it's the volume yes. of facing it over the course of a game and the turnovers forced and maybe the questionable shots and decision making. But I don't want anybody out there not to understand West Liberty is really good on defense. and. and I get kind of mad because I'm an old cranky guy <laughs> when people say we don't play defense. That is ludicrous. Absolutely so. And, um, and again, if you go to any West Liberty practice, uh, they will spend, they, they, they do spend a lot of time shooting the basketball because that's what they're known for. But when they're on the court, 60, 70, 80 percent of their time is spent on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, it's been a great formula. Well, that's going to wrap up uh, this first session of Inside Hilltopper Athletics. I hope everyone out there is as excited as we are, and when we come back, we'll be joined by head men's basketball coach Ben Hallam. Go Toppers! Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Kyle Cooper. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Allum. Welcome back to the second edition of Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joined by head coach Ben Hallett. Coach, this is what we come up here for. Yeah, uh, our guys are really excited. They've, uh, we've had a day off yesterday. We had a good practice, um, ate a lot of good food, um, but they're, they're ready to play today. They've got a extra pep in their step. We had a great shoot around this morning and we can't wait till seven o'clock. Yeah, it's it's been an exciting run and I think I verbalized to your coaching staff yesterday. I returned to campus yesterday for a couple administrative meetings and there's was more of a buzz for this than I've seen in a long time. And the credits obviously to you, your staff and the team. It, it's been one of those seasons, thirty wins now we're playing in a regional final against uh, another legendary Atlantic re region program. But before we talk a little bit more about that, let's just go backwards to the Mercyhurst game. We interviewed you before the game. 
You kind of felt good about it. Mm -hmm. Talk about the start. <laughs> uh, not much to talk about. We uh, got off to just an awful start, and we had a hard time getting good looks. Um, and I think once our guys settled in, and I thought that second group, like I talked about post game, um, I thought that second platoon really gave us a, a big lift off the bench. And I thought Dante's energy was contagious. You know, he made a couple plays for us, and actually knocked down a couple shots for us as well. And then. Once our guys settled in, um, you know, I thought they, they got the hang of their, their funky zone that they run. Um, they settled down, and we were able to get good looks. And once we got up double, double digits, we kind of put them away there. Well, what, what I'll give you credit for, and we're all victims of this, we knew who were playing. And they came in, and we knew they were one of the nation's leaders in defense and points given up and et cetera, et cetera. So... I sat, Dr. John McCullough was sitting behind me, and we were down like eight, or we were down six, and I said, Dr. McCullough, we're only down six, but when you play Mercyhurst, it feels like it's 15. Yeah. Thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, and we were down six, and we couldn't even get a clean look. Like, nothing was going our way, so during one of the timeouts, we actually said that, like, nothing's going our way right now. We haven't got a clean look, and shots are hard to come by, but we're only down six, so that was actually a, a positive feeling for towards us, and... Um, there was just zero panic with our players. You know, we've got such veteran players, guys that have played in big games, guys that have won big games, and there was zero panic. And, um, you know, I thought getting, you know, a lead at halftime was huge for us. I think we were up three at halftime and then came out in the, in the second half and threw the first punch. And I think we got up double figures there before the 12-minute before the media timeout and, and never really looked back. Yeah, it was, it was a magical run there in the second half. And, and getting back into just who you're playing style of play, the opposite side of that is when they're up six, eight, ten points, they're probably thinking this feels like we're up one Yeah. because they know how quickly your team has the ability. Um, one of the key plays, I thought, just for that mental lift, was Christian's shot right before the half. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough, it, it, was, it was a turnaround fadeaway shot, it was, and it was over their big guy, too, which was an incredibly tough shot. I thought... You know, again, I know we don't talk about individuals here, but I thought Christian was so good for us. You know, he, he was gritty defensively. He was really, really good and made some big-time shots for us. And obviously, Bryce, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on him. He solved their defense for us. You know, we just put the ball in his hands um, at the high post and said, do your thing, and he did his thing, and, um, you know, he was really good. Now, was that a conscious thought of getting him the ball in the high yep. post? Whenever we don't know what to do, we just give the ball to Bryce, and he'll figure it out from there. Like He's just such a crafty player and smart player, too. Yeah, well, this is where I want to give you credit, though, from someone that coached, because I'm 180 years old and coached about 180 years. I was telling a few people after the game, I thought it was brilliant, because you knew you were going to face doubles coming in. I would say one of the hardest places to double in the entire court is at the foul line. Yeah. Where does that double come from? Right. And you're facing where the double comes from. It's an easier pass out of it. Exactly. And we knew opposite corner was where we were going to get some clean looks. And Bryce is just such an unselfish player. And what was really cool to watch is, you know, he's our quote-unquote best player. He didn't force any shots. He didn't do anything he couldn't do. He just let the game come to him. And I thought he dictated the whole game with his passing. I thought he was an elite passer for us. And one, the last thing that I just want to mention, which I thought was so beneficial to us winning that game, I'm a big hockey assist guy. A lot of teams don't talk about that, and I said if I was ever going back to coaching, I would make that one of the tenets of our program. We would talk about hockey assist a lot. And if you remember, Malik had a big three midway through that second half. Mm -hmm. We had got it up to around 10. Mm -hmm. That was an unbelievable hockey assist. I think Ben Sarson penetrated on the baseline, kicked it out top, and it may have even been Christian. And I bet the ball wasn't in his hand .1 seconds, and it was a rocket reversal, and Malik is wide open. Yeah, the, the pass from Sarson was, and this is, we, we work on that same drill, dry baseline, draw help. You know, we've got two guys on the perimeter. They've got one defender. Let's find who's open. That was a heck of a play by Sarson, but just the, you know, the guy able to just touch pass to, to Malik there um, was awesome to see. and. We made a good shot, a great shot. And that's what makes, that's why I enjoy watching this team so much. It's why I enjoy covering this team so much. And you say it every time, I know we don't talk about individuals. What makes this team cool 
is we could talk about like eight individuals if we chose to. Mm -hmm. That on any given night, different guys, when needed, are going to be there making plays. And I just think our depth is a huge advantage yeah. against a lot of the, the teams we play. So let's now fast forward. We're going to play in an Atlantic Region Championship game tonight, playing a somewhat familiar foe, if by reputation first and foremost, in IUP. So thoughts as you're preparing for IUP? <laughs> yeah, obviously they're really good. They're, they're very well coached. Um, not that deep of a team. They're going to play seven or eight guys, but those seven or eight guys are all really good players. And we've certainly got our hands full. Um, their defense is really good in the half court, really good, and, and they're well-schooled. They don't make many mistakes. And so it's going to be a challenge for us to get high percentage shots um, with guys in rebounding position. And then I think it's important, and, and Coach Lombardi would say the same thing. It's, it kind of goes back to the last game, like who can control the tempo? You know, they're, they're more of a half court oriented team. We want to, you know, wear them down. We want the pace to be up and down. So it's another contrasting styles of play, but um, I think it's going to be really important who can control the tempo. This would be a Don Clegg type question. Did playing Mercyhurst, is that a good prep game for IUP? Because they're a defensive oriented, not up and down as much, or do you see even considerable differences in those two? I think Mercyhurst is, is a matchup zone. It's more of a matchup zone, and IUP is more of a, you know, inside the key, man to man. But both of them are extremely physical, and both of them, you know, as far as rebounding, are just it's going to be really tough for us to get offensive rebounds. But you know, we're not the biggest of teams, but we always are in the top ten in the country in offensive rebounds. So that's something that we're going to continue to stress. Is let's let's try to get some offensive rebounds. And so I would say to answer your question, I think the physicality is very similar between the two teams. Great point. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm sure you've got superstitious pregame rituals to get to. But All kinds of them. Yeah, well, thank you for coming in and spending some time with us. And that wraps up this uh, version of Inside Hilltopper Athletics Championship Game, 7 o'clock this evening. Here at West Liberty University, our Topper Thrift Store focuses on secondhand essentials. We are student-driven and affordable with forward vision that aims at improving campus life. Donating is easy. Swing by Main Hall 185 with any unwanted apparel or accessories. To keep up with weekly store hour information, follow us on social media. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Ben Hallett. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. <laughs>